This is one of the weirdest, craziest dating experiences I've ever had. And I've had some pretty weird stuff so far. <laughs> it started about two weeks ago. Match with this girl on, I think it was Bumble. And started talking, planned a date, went on the date. And the very beginning of the date already started off on the wrong foot. So a couple days before, a week before, I went on another date. And I was late because I couldn't get a taxi. So I'm like, this time I don't want to be late. So I'm going to leave half an hour earlier. That way, if I can't grab a taxi, I won't be late. Of course, that time I managed to grab a taxi immediately. So I end up getting there half an hour earlier. The restaurant where we're meeting is next to like one of those small, I don't know, smart centers or whatever you call them, where it's like a bunch of stores gathered, gathered together, but it's around a central like parking lot and it's not indoors, it's outdoors. So it was one of those. I'm like just kind of walking around in circles around the parking lot while I'm waiting. And of course, I'm half an hour early. She ends up being an hour late for multiple reasons. First of all, she couldn't get a taxi. Second of all, which I only learned after she showed up. She's like, oh yeah, I'm always late. I'm like, well, thanks. You could have told me that before, but anyway, whatever. So I ended up waiting there for an hour and a half, walking around in circles in that parking lot. And maybe midway through, I notice a plant with tiny pineapples growing out of it. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Like I want to take a picture. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I've been pacing here for nearly an hour already. And the pineapple tree, well, plant, is right in front of a jewelry store. So it might look very suspicious if I take a picture now. So I'm like, I'm just going to wait till the end. And once she's here, I'm just going to snap a picture and then go meet her. So keep pacing and pacing. And there's a security guard who just like, you know, sitting in his corner doing his job. But, you know, public place, there's nothing. I'm not doing anything wrong. So keep pacing. And eventually she messages me like, oh, okay, I'm almost there. So I'm like, okay, I, I keep going around. And when I get to the pineapple, I take a picture of the tiny pineapple and I keep going. And before I even complete another lap, someone goes to complain to the security guard. Security guard comes to speak to me and he basically explains, hey, you're not doing anything wrong. This is public property. You're allowed to be here. However, the fact that you're white, so a gringo, you know, a foreigner, you've been, you know, walking around here for a while and you took a picture and people around here don't really take pictures. Like, it's, it's very suspicious. What are you doing? So I explained the situation like, hey, I'm waiting for my date. She's late. And I just saw the tiny pineapple and I thought it was cute and I wanted to show it to her. So I just took a picture. And anyway, the guy's like, you know, whatever. Like, there's nothing wrong. It's just someone complained. So I had to come speak to you. And of course, midway through the conversation, the girl messaged me saying, oh, I just got here. Where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'll be right there. So I'm like, sorry, I, ha I have to go. She just showed up. But the guy just keeps talking and talking. I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to go. But he keeps talking. And eventually I managed to get him to stop talking and, you know, wish him a good day. And I leave maybe like, I don't know, five minutes after she arrives. So meet up with her and, you know, we have our date. Everything's great. After the meal, we go for a walk to a nearby little park. And that's when I find out that she doesn't like parks. I mean, it's fine. Not everyone has to like everything. I've just never come across someone who dislikes parks. That just seemed very weird to me. So anyway, we're like, what should we do next? So we agree we're going to go back to my place. So I order a taxi. And as we're waiting for the taxi to show up, you know, we're talking and hanging out. And a couple minutes before the taxi shows up, she's like, I changed my mind. I don't think I'm comfortable going to your place right now. And I'm like, okay, that's not a problem, but you should have told me before I ordered a taxi. And she's like, oh, it's fine. We can just, you know, get the taxi and ask it to drive us somewhere else. So we end up going to another place and grabbing a drink there and keep talking. And maybe an hour, an hour and a half later, she's like, yeah, I, I made a mistake. We should have gone back to your place. And I'm like, of course we did. Anyway, whatever. So I'm like, well, it's not too late. We can still go back. So we grab another taxi, go back to my place, end up in bed and, you know, Good date overall, aside from how it started off. Now, fast forward. Oh, no, sorry. I forgot an important part. So because everything went well and she has the next day off, we're like, hey, let's spend the day tomorrow together. And that was the plan, except the morning of the next day, she messages me saying, oh, sorry, my roommate is sick. I have to take care of him. Now, in my head, I'm like, okay, but he's your roommate. It's not like it's your 
sibling or your parents or your child or your like boyfriend or whatever it's like it's your roommate you don't need to take care of him like i don't say that because i'm not a mean person i don't know their relationship or whatever and apparently like she was sick the week before and he took care of her so i'm like okay whatever i don't want to judge but since we agreed to meet and her cat had an operation that day i feel kind of like like a dick if i just completely cancel that day so i'm like okay we can you know i'll meet you at the veteran veterinarian's office and as your cat's getting the operation we can you know hang out so that's what we end up doing and you know see each other for a couple hours then she goes back to her place with her cat and i go back home and we plan to see each other the next week so <laughs> A um, couple days after that, you know, we keep talking every day. And a couple days later, she says, I don't think this is going to work out because all you think about is sex. And I don't want to be with someone who only thinks about sex. And I'm like, I don't know why you think that. It's like, sure, I make jokes and I make sexual innuendos and I flirt just because it's a fun way to joke around and flirt. But I don't need to do that because I don't only think about sex. And she basically like ghosts me for a day. And that's probably the point where I should have been, all right, this girl cannot be trusted. Let's just end it now. But I'm kind of a sucker. So I guess I keep going and eventually we start talking again. And, you know, we decide to meet the next week as we planned. So the next Saturday we meet, we go on a date. And, you know, at that point, I just like, I'm still myself. I just avoid making, you know, jokes about sex and like, you know, stuff like that. And midway through the date, she's like, what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I have any plans. Why? She's like, well, I could come over and spend the night. And in my head, I'm like, hold up. How the hell do you go from, I don't want to see you anymore because all you think about is sex to, hey, let me come over and spend the night, which is code for sex. Now, of course, I don't say that because I'm a guy and we like sex. Plus, you know, aside from all the craziness, we actually get along when we're together. So I'm like, sure. The only thing is the next day I have plans. So I'm like, all right, let's do it the day after that. So we plan to see each other the day after or the day after the day after. <laughs> so in two days. And of course, the morning of she messages me saying, I just got my period. I can't come. I'm like, okay, sucks, but you know, it's not her fault. Just like it wasn't her fault that her roommate got sick before. It's still kind of weird, but it's not her fault. So I'm like, I can't blame her. So it's like, okay, let's see each other next week, which was yesterday. So, you know, keep talking. Everything seems great. She's like, oh, I really miss you. I'm looking forward to seeing you, blah, blah, blah. And then on Thursday, the day before our date, she messages me saying, I don't think I should come over. I'm like, of course not. Why? And she's like, oh, well, you're only here for a short amount of time. And I'm like, not the one to, you know, move too quickly. And in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, but we ended up in bed on the first date. So bullshit, but whatever. I'm not going to call her out on it. So anyway, she's like, you know, I don't like to move too quickly. I don't want to invest too much time and energy into this. If you're just going to leave, I don't want anyone to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, she flip flops so many times back and forth that I feel like it's a, it's a matter of respect to me. I feel that's disrespectful to me, but I did kind of enable it because I let it go along. So she's not completely to blame and I'm a nice person. So I'm like, there's no point in end things thing, ending things on a bad note and just being a dick about it, but I'm still going to let her know. So I explained what I just said, you know, I felt that was disrespectful to me. And in the future, I would recommend being careful about that because people don't like to feel disrespected. And anyway, I don't, you know, I'm not angry. I don't want to blame you. I don't want to end things on a bad note. So I enjoyed the time we spent together. I wish you nothing but happiness for the future. Goodbye. And I thought that would be the end of it. But a couple hours later, she messages me saying, oh, no, like, don't be like that. Let me make it up to you. And I'm like, really? You're changing your mind again. What the hell is wrong with you? Now, I'm tempted to just ignore her, but 
I've been ghosted in the past and I know how disrespectful it is. I'm like, I don't want to be that person, but it's really late. I can't deal with this right now. So I'm like, fine, I'm, I'm going to bed. I don't want to deal with this right now. If you want, we can talk tomorrow. So the next day, wake up, message her. I'm like, you want to talk? Go ahead. I'm listening. I forget exactly what she said, but basically she's like, you know, I still like you. I just don't know, you know, if we have a future or whatever. And it's like, it gets to the point where I realized, oh, okay. You just wanted me to forgive you for what you did. So you don't feel bad. So I'm like, all right, fine. You don't, you're not at fault for anything. You don't have to feel bad. You can move on with your life. I give you full permission. And that was the last message I sent. Her response was, a sad emoji reaction to the message. And I'm like, yep, I'm just gonna leave it at that. No more, I'm done, I'm not ghosting her, I'm not being a dick, I just did what I had to do. But I'm just like, that is so insane. Like, how can people be like that? Like, I understand that women are more emotional than men, men are more rational, women are more emotional, so it's normal for women to be slightly less predictable. It's just part of human nature. But that just seems completely insane to me. It's like one second you want this, the other you want that. This, that, this, that. It's like make up your mind. That's all I ask. Make up your fucking mind. Now, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to speak to her again. I've moved on. But I'm just like, that is completely insane. How can a rational person behave that way? It just blows my mind. And of course, ironically, that was already weird by itself. But in the background of this, there's other things happening. So... That was more in the last week. In the last week, I've had so many like weird things when it comes to dating that I'm like, what the hell is going on right now? So on Friday, last Friday, not yesterday, I had a date with her. Then on Saturday, I had a date with a different girl. And on Sunday, I was supposed to have a... Uh, was I supposed to have it? I don't know. There's been so many that's been confusing, Brett. Sunday, I think I didn't have anything. No, Sunday, I was supposed to, to see her, right? And then she ended up canceling because she got her period. Monday, I had another date with another girl. And I planned it the week before, so I hadn't spoken to her in about three days. So the morning of, I messaged her saying, hey, are we still on for a date this afternoon? No response to us before. I messaged her saying, I'm assuming the date is still on, so I'm going to see you there. No response. You know, just because I'm like, I don't want to be, I don't want her to show up and feel like I stood her up. So just, you know, even though I'm probably going to want be the one who gets stood up, I, I'm still going to go just because I don't want to be a mean person. So leave an hour before it takes half an hour to get there. And I'm like, that gives me half an hour to find a taxi. But I just walk and walk and walk and every single taxi I come across already has someone in it. So I ended up walking around for over half an hour trying to grab a taxi and not being able to. It gets to the point where it's five minutes before the time I'm supposed to show up at the date. Still haven't heard from her. Still haven't found a taxi. Even if I find a taxi that exact moment, I'm still going to be 15 minutes late. So I'm like, at this point, it's, there's no point going anymore. So I just messaged her saying like, hey, I haven't heard from you three days. I'm assuming you're not going to show up. I can't get a taxi. So it was nice almost meeting you. And eventually, ironically, a few minutes after that, managed to get a taxi. By then, I'm like, yeah, I already told her, so let's just move on with my life, go do grocery shopping. So it wasn't a complete waste of time. And while I'm in the taxi, I get another match with a different girl. So it's like the universe is like, well, this date just blew up in your face, but here's a replacement one for the future. And for the other girl who canceled, she ended up messaging me a few hours later saying, oh, sorry, I didn't realize we confirmed the date. I'm like, yep, if you go back in the conversation, we confirm the time and the day and the place for today. And anyway, whatever. So the girl I matched with in the taxi after that date was canceled, I guess, um, ended up talking to her. And the next day we're talking and I'm like, hey, you want to go out on a date? She's like, yeah. I'm like, when? like oh i'm free today and she sends me her live location so i'm like oh okay i could be there maybe like an hour by the time you know i get ready and grab a taxi and head there so you know that's what i do get ready um grab a taxi it's easier to grab a taxi this time than last time so that's a good thing drive over half an hour to get to her meet her at her house pick her up where i'm like what do you want to do she's like oh we can go to a shopping mall that's nearby there's restaurants and stuff so grab another taxi to go there 
we go to a restaurant, we each order a drink. She gulps it down in like two minutes. She's like, should we get the bill? I'm like, okay. And I'm like, what do you want to do now? She's like, oh, go back to your place. I'm like, okay. I, I mean, sure, that was easy. Like, I, I wouldn't normally be like, sure, of course. But the thing is, when I showed up, she looked different than in her picture and not in a good way. It's not that she was like, she looks super nice in her pictures and then you show up and she's like overweight, which usually happens in, on dating sites. It's just like she had a completely different haircut and she just looked completely different and not in a good way. So, I, but you know, she was still relatively attractive. So I'm like, okay, you know, why not? Let's go back to my place. So we go grab a taxi and instead of sitting in the back of the taxi, she sits in the front and I'm like, what the hell is happening? And it's like, as we're driving, we start driving, I realize like, oh, okay, she's going back to her place and I'm going back to my place. So, you know, the taxi drops her off at her place and then starts driving me home. And I'm just sitting there in the taxi. I'm like, what the hell just happened? I drive half an hour I meet her, pick her up, pay for another taxi to go to the shopping center, grab a drink, pay for the drink. She gulps it down in two minutes. We grab another taxi, drive her home, and then I have to drive another half hour to get home. We spent maybe 15 minutes together. I'm like, what the hell just happened? So normally I'm like, okay, that's like super disrespectful. So I would just, you know, ignore her and move on with my life. But it's so strange that I'm like, I need to know what the hell just happened. So I message her explaining what I just explained. I'm like, okay, what just happened? Like I did all that and we spent 15 minutes together. Like what happened? And she's like, oh, well, I just, you know, I had something I had to do today and I forgot about it. My sister was calling me to let me know. And I'm like, okay, sure, I guess. So it's like, at least I have an explanation. It still seems weird to me because it seems to me like you just made me spend over 20 bucks to go buy you a fucking iced tea that you gulped down in two minutes. That's, that's how it seems to me. Like, I didn't say that because I'm like, whatever. I, I got my answer, moving on. I was like, okay, thanks for the explanation. It was nice seeing you for like 15 minutes. And, you know, that was pretty much code for, it was nice seeing you, goodbye forever. And then she responds with like, you know, the blushing face with like the hearts. And I don't know, another emoji. I think it was a hug or something. I'm just like, how was that not obviously a good buy? So I'm like, whatever, just ignore her, move on, whatever. So I was like, okay, the day before, the date kind of gets canceled because I kind of sort of did, but not really got stood up. Today is like 20, well, 15 minute date. And it's like so weird. I'm like, what's next? So I have a date scheduled for Thursday with another girl. And the date with the first girl I was telling you about in the beginning of this story for Friday. And then on Wednesday, that girl from Friday messages me saying, Hey, there's this like uh, trivia event at a bar tonight. Do you want to go with me? I'm like, okay, sure. So I'm like, you know, how, sh like, where should I meet you and everything? So it's like, I go through this whole like scheduling of like, all right, I can go meet you at your job in a taxi, pick you up. We'll drive to the bar and then I'll drop you off in the taxi to your home on the way back. So it's like, I go through the trouble of planning everything. And then she's like, yeah, I think it's better if I just, you know, stay home tonight and relax. I'm like, of course it is. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's Wednesday. Then on Thursday, the other girl I had a date with ends up canceling because I haven't heard from her in, in a few days. So I think the day before I messaged her that morning, I think it was that morning that I messaged her like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a few days. Are we still going to see each other? today and she messaged me like oh sorry I'm like going through some stuff and I'm like kind of isolating from people so I'm like okay like I respect that like cool you know like we'll just do the date whenever you're done processing with your processing but in the back of my head I'm like of course another day canceled makes perfect sense and then as I explained before the girl on Friday ends up canceling again so I'm like of course ironically enough another girl that I match with on Friday we start talking and I'm like, hey, you want to go on a date? She's like, sure. I'm like, when are you free? She's like, today. So we plan to meet that very night. I'm like, cool. So I got another replacement date once again. <laughs> and of course, an hour before we're supposed to meet, right before I'm about to leave, she messaged me saying, oh, I just got home. I have a really bad headache. Is it okay if we reschedule? I'm like, of course it is. 
of course it is. <laughs> so I'm like, sure, you know what, you know, rest, take care of yourself. Like, you know, we'll see each other whenever we can. So <laughs> that was yesterday. Two dates canceled in the same day. That's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> And today I have another date scheduled for, I don't know, a couple hours from now. And even though we've been talking a lot, we get along really well and we're both looking forward to seeing each other, I'm kind of half expecting it to blow up in my face once again. And another one that I'm scheduled for t scheduling for tomorrow with the other girl that I had a date with last weekend, I'm also assuming that's somehow going to explode. And I also have a date on Monday with another girl that I met yesterday. And I'm also kind of expecting that to not happen just given the last record, like track record for the last week. And also there was another girl that I matched with yesterday that we planned to meet. And I'm like, she was kind of like a little nervous of like, I don't know you. I'm like, it's fine. We can take the time to get to know each other and whatever. And it's like, when you're ready, we can meet. And then she's like, well, we could meet uh, near my university where I go and we can meet like for lunch. So that way there's going to be less pressure. So I'm like, okay, what day are you, would you prefer? And she's like, how about Monday? And I'm like, wait, I already have a date for Monday, but it's at night. So I, yeah, I could do during the day. So, you know, we arranged to meet during the day. A couple hours later, she messaged me saying, oh, I just remembered I have an exam in the afternoon. Is it okay if we change to another day? And I'm like, of course it is. We just planned the date and it already got canceled while well, postponed. So anyway, we switched that and we're going to go on a date on Wednesday. But it's just like, I look at that track record and I'm like, that is, that is insane. Oh yeah. Another thing, the girl that I have a date with on Monday night, we met, we matched yesterday, started talking. And then around like eight o'clock at night, she's like, oh, when we first started talking, I was thinking like, oh, it really, it would be really cool if we went out for a drink tonight. I'm like, yeah, okay, but it's too late. Like I live really far by the time I get ready, manage to get a taxi and get there. Like it's going to take an hour, an hour and a half. So it's like, you should have told me before. So it's like, there was a date that got canceled before it was really a date. So I'm like, I'm at that level now. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> that has been my dating experiences for the last couple of weeks very strange so it's like on one hand it's like i'm getting so many matches and i'm planning so many dates on the other hand i'm going on maybe 10 percent of those dates and they usually somehow blow up in my face so i'm like I, I don't really care like it's at this point it's just entertaining and i'm just like let's just make dates just to see them like explode in my face because that'll be fun what else am i gonna do <laughs> so yeah that has been the last few weeks of my life so that's pretty much been my life, planning and canceling dates and working on the business. That has been the last couple of weeks of my life. <laughs> Hopefully that was entertaining for you. And in fact, in the beginning, it was a little like confusing and weird. And I'm like, is the universe trying to tell me something? And at this point, I'm like, this is just hilarious. So let's just enjoy it and see how far it goes. <laughs>